Paddock 10 was the mystery enclosure in Jurassic World and still holds many secrets to this day, such as what was actually in this Paddock 10, as we all know what was in Paddock 9 and 11, as these were only ever mentioned in the movie, with Paddock 9 being the Tyrannosaurus Rex and Paddock 11 being the Indominus Rex. These Paddocks 9, 10 and 11 have evidence to suggest that they are housing the biggest dinosaurs in Jurassic World. But what was actually housed in Paddock 10? We know that there were many areas of Isla Nublar which was never fully explored during the movie or during Camp Cretaceous. And there's a whole restricted section which we can talk about. Now we do know there is a Carnotaurus on Isla Nublar because we see it in Camp Cretaceous and in Fallen Kingdom. Now the Carnotaurus would not be kept in Paddock 10 because it's seen escaping from the quarantine pen in Camp Cretaceous after the Indominus Rex lets it out. So that rules out the Carnotaurus. We also know an Allosaurus was loose on Isla Nublar because we see it in Fallen Kingdom. But again, I do not believe the Allosaurus to be in Paddock 10 because I believe the Paddock 10 was kept for something more secret, something more deadly. And one of the entries at the end will completely blow your mind. We also know that in Jurassic World there was a massive restricted section where they housed all their experiments. So was the fruits of their labour kept in Paddock 10? Now, there are numerous dinosaurs I am not going to cover in this video because I covered them in part one. And if you want to watch that after this, I would highly recommend it because it's going to feature dinosaurs which are not on this list. Now, the official documentation of what was in Paddock 10 was never released, but with all the upcoming evidence, we can kind of make a picture of what was kept in there. Lots of people believe that the Tarbosaurus was indeed meant for Paddock 10. Now, the Tarbosaurus is basically a T-Rex with a smaller jaw and was featured in Camp Cretaceous Hidden Adventure. Now there is a problem with that. Camp Cretaceous is canon. So anything in Camp Cretaceous is canon to the Jurassic World universe. But Camp Cretaceous Hidden Adventure is not confirmed to be canon. And even if it is, there's an ending where she's killed by Rexy and that could explain her absence in the franchise later on. Although the Tarbosaurus is a massive dinosaur, I don't believe it to be featured in Paddock 10. I believe it for something more horrific. Now what could be more horrific than that you say? One of the potentials is the failed hybrid, the Scorpius Rex. Now the Scorpius Rex again was from Camp Cretaceous and is canon and technically the first hybrid ever created, backdating the Indominus Rex. So it makes sense for them to build Paddock 10 for the Scorpius Rex, then Paddock 11 for the Indominus Rex. The construction and timelines match up, although the Scorpius Rex isn't a massive animal and Simon Mizrani ordered it destroyed rather than being kept in the park. So it never really left the lab and was kept in stasis. As much as I love the creaky look and aesthetic of the Scorpius Rex, I don't believe that was kept in Paddock 10. But there is potential for hybrids to be kept in this Paddock 10, and I think we're onto something there. During the original script of the Jurassic World movie, the gang were meant to encounter a Stegoceratops. Now you might be asking yourself, what even is the Stegoceratops? Well, like the Indominus Rex, the Stegoceratops was a highly advanced hybrid with its genome constructed using the DNA of various other organisms. Its source species are mostly unknown at this time, but there's evidence showing it is the Stegosaurus makeup and Triceratop makeup, and we actually see this being rendered in Dr. Wu's hybrid laboratory on his computer. There's evidence to suggest that this is indeed ready and was waiting to be released to the public prior to the events and fall of Jurassic World in 2015. And just like the Indominus Rex, they would have had this ready years before its announcement. This was obviously cut from the final film because they only wanted to keep Indominus as the sole hybrid because otherwise lots of hybrids running around would take away the uniqueness of the Indominus Rex. So there is potential for a Stegoceratops hybrid to be kept in Paddock 10. Yes, I believe there is potential there. Although there are other animals out there which we're going to explore right now. And again, I haven't got to the one which I believe is going to blow your mind. You might also be wondering what could be more horrific, more creepy than all these other dinosaurs we've mentioned. We've mentioned the Scorpius Rex, we've mentioned the Stegoceratops. How could anything possibly beat these in terms of creepiness and hybridability? Well, we'll get to that in just a second. One of the obvious contenders which we haven't talked about in this video is the Spinosaurus and we've gone into depth on how that is a very likely candidate in the previous video with lots of canonological evidence to prove that it's actually there as well. But that is not what we're going to talk about in this video, oh no. Now this one could potentially blow your mind so let me explain. What if Paddock 10 
was always intended for the second Indominus Rex. Now I know what you're thinking, how is that even possible? So let me explain. There were always two Indominus Rexes as we know, and if you've watched my previous video on the story of the Black Indominus Rex, you do know that she was not actually killed at birth, and they were actually housed together in the same paddock, Paddock 11. But that's an illogical move, because after a certain growth period, they'd both be too large to keep in Paddock 11. So the plan would be to always separate the two Indominuses, one living in Paddock 11, the original Paddock, and the other in Paddock 10. Now you might also be thinking that she ate the other Indominus at birth. That is incorrect. She ate the other Indominus whilst they were both in Paddock 11. Now, from a business perspective, they would definitely have two paddocks ready to separate these animals. And I believe that's what actually was the case. There's more evidence pointing to that theory than there is the Spinosaurus. When you actually think about it logically, it makes sense. How would they ever keep animals of that size together in a small enclosure? They wouldn't. They would have to separate them. But as of 2015, there was only one Indominus, which would leave Paddock 10 either A, empty, or B, they did fill it with one of the other previous experiments, although initially I do believe Paddock 10 was intended for the second Indominus Rex. After the Indominus Rex was killed, well anything could be in there. A good contender would be the Spinosaurus and I highly recommend checking out part one of the original video. Realistically, with the evidence we have, it could be any one of the animals I have previously mentioned. But what do you believe was kept in Paddock 10? Please let me know in the comments below. Could it be something we haven't spoken about? Maybe a Titanoboa? The Dinosuchus, perhaps, because we know that was on Isla Nubla. Please let me know in the comments. I'd like to thank my Patreon and YouTube members. Thanks, guys. You really do make these videos possible. And if you want to be a YouTube member, check out the links in the description. I'm Shadows, and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers now. Bye-bye.